I'd like to say praise the Lord, and we'd like to say good morning to another Sunday School lesson, and we want to thank God for another opportunity just to be able to come and to share and to be a blessing to you. And we're praying that you guys are getting something out of the series of lessons that we've been sharing with you over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, today's lesson is going to be talking about faith, the faith of Abraham, and we're going to be moving around in a lot of different areas, so that you get your Bibles out. The lesson will be coming from the book of Romans, the fourth chapter, the first 12 verses. Also, Genesis, the 15th chapter, the sixth verse. I want to thank Pastor Speece for being here today, and Sister Speece, uh, Superintendent Marcus, uh, thank God for you, and Evangelist Sullivan, and the Sunday School Department. We just rejoice today and just being able to come into fellowship once again with each other. Um, I'm going to do something a little different today uh, because you always look for ways to kind of help people to understand the scripture better. Um, that's what, you know, being a teacher or pastor is all about is enlightening people, encouraging their faith, helping them to be able to understand, you know, the scripture better. So instead of me looking at my King James Version, I'm going to read from uh, Application Study Bible today. And that's going to kind of give us a feel, some translation. It's going to kind of give us a feel for the scripture a little better versus us uh, using some of the Hebrew words and the Greek words. They're good. Of course, we know that we had to study those Greek and Hebrew words because sometimes they have different definitions. And as Sister so, 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 so said, we don't want to take anything out of context. So again, it's good to be able to uh, locate these words and if that word has been spoken more than three or four times, you know that's something that you need to pay attention to. So let us go on and read from uh, Romans, the fourth chapter, uh, from this application. And then we'll kind of dive into the lesson and shed some lights on some key points. All right. Uh, fourth chapter, the first verse. Abraham, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What were his experiences? concerning this question of being saved by faith. Was it because of his good deeds that God accepted him? If so, he would have had, had something to boast about. But from God's point of view, Abraham had no basis at all for pride. For the scripture tells us Abraham believed God. So God credited or God declared him to be righteous. When people work, their wages are not a gift. Workers earn what they receive. But people, but people are declared righteous because of their faith, not because of their work. King David spoke of this, describing the happiness of an undeserving sinner who is declared to be righteous. Oh, what joy! For those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose sin is no longer counted against them by the Lord. Now then, is this blessing only for the Jews or is it for the Gentiles too? Well, what about Abraham? We have been saying he was declared righteous by God because of his faith. But how did his faith help him? Was, it, was he declared righteous only after he had been circumcised? Or was it before he was circumcised? Well, the answer is that God accepted him first, and then he was circumcised later. The circumcision ceremony was a sign that Abraham already had faith and that God had already accepted him and declared him to be righteous. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll stop right there. But anyway, I wanted to read from that study Bible to kind of give us a little feel because some of the words have been translated. And as we get into the lesson now, you know, some of the words that's in your King James Version, we'll highlight those. Uh, speaking of words, uh, there are some key words uh, in that chapter. Uh, one of them is believe. Uh, when we talk about the word belief, can you a little, uh, I'm shaking, but 
talk about believe in this particular context here, we're talking about trusting, trusting in what the person say. And of course, this is what the Bible say, Abraham, he trusted what God said. You may say, well, what kind of faith did Abraham have? Because the lesson talks about uh, the faith of Abraham. But what kind of faith did he have? He had an obedient faith. Yes, he had a trusted faith. And he also had a growing faith. And this is very important for us because uh, I'm not going to get too much sidetracked, but, but when we talk about faith, this is probably one of the most important lessons uh, that you can uh, learn other than your salvation. Because uh, as the scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, it's impossible to please God without faith. Mm -hmm. He that comes to God must believe that he is a what? A rewarder mm -hmm. to them that diligently seek him. So in order for us to please God, we have to have faith. The book of Romans, the 12th chapter, tells us in the third verse, God has dealt to each one of us the measure of faith. Now that measure of faith that he gives to each one of us when we first accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Of course, the Bible says he's no respect of a person. He didn't give me more faith than he gave you. We all start off with the same measure of faith. But the scripture also tells us that we have to exercise that faith mm -hmm. and we have to develop that faith. And how does faith come? The Bible mm -hmm. says faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we have to constantly, continuously keep doing, hearing that word. Because the more we hear God's word, the more our minds get renewed every day. And also the word faith. Of course, as we talked about faith, uh, as I said before, in this particular context, we're talking about trust and being obedient to the word of God. Now, as we grow in grace, and as we go in knowledge, as the scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews uh, 11, 1, now faith is the substance. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when we talk about faith, we're talking about not seeing anything from a natural point of view, mm -hmm. but just trusting in what the word of God say. If God mm -hmm. said it, I don't have to see it. If God said it, it's already a done deal. Mm -hmm. And you know the scripture said God's word will not return to him void. Sometimes we get sidetracked because we try to uh, understand God's word with this natural mind. I can't do it. This mind has to be, that's why the Bible tells us in what Romans, be not what conformed. And think about all the things that has conformed our minds when we were knee high size. Mm -hmm. So many different things, so many different people uh, spoken to our lives. Mm -hmm. But when we came, became a child of God, the Bible said, be not conformed mm -hmm. to this world, but be what? Transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of our minds that we may what? Prove what's good what's acceptable in the sight of God. So, and you know, for yourself, you know, we hear news, we even hear relatives, we hear friends, they call it right and wrong. They call it 10, 11. Mm -hmm. uh, but you gotta call a, a, a ace what it is. It's an ace, it's called it wrong is wrong and right is right. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we have to look at it. We have to be honest with ourselves. But as we look at the lesson today, Apostle Paul again sharing with these growing Jewish believers and Gentile believers. Remember now, Paul was not the one that found this church, but he's writing to these believers here mm -hmm. in Rome. And of course, Paul, uh, you know, as being a pastor, you know, you have that authority to lay foundations and to make sure that those ministries or those churches are building on the right foundation. Mm -hmm. So, as we look at the lesson, one of the questions was asked, explain how God justifies, that is, that is declare righteousness, ungodly people through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Paul uses Abraham, one of the old patriarchs, he used Abraham, he used David as examples because of course we know Abraham was the father of faith. And that doesn't mean that faith, uh, Abraham did not come short he came short many times, but God credited to his righteousness. Mm -hmm. 
And as we get further to the lesson, you know, the scriptures say Abraham, he believed God. And if you look at the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, he's one of the what? Heroes, uh, heroes of faith. So as Paul continues, he's wanted to defend his message of salvation by grace through faith. And he want these Jewish believers and Gentile believers to understand that you cannot be saved by obeying the law. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Masonic law. Now, he didn't say that the law wasn't good. The law was good. And the law served its purpose. Mm -hmm. But the law purpose was to draw you mm -hmm. to Christ. Mm -hmm. Or to let you know that you have come short mm -hmm. of God's glory. Mm -hmm. But the law could not save you. Mm -hmm. Because if the law could have saved us, why would we need Jesus? Mm -hmm. So again, he wanted to make sure that they understood that. And he also wanted them to understand that we're not saved by good works. Meaning, uh, you know, sometimes when you first come to church and sometimes people start doing religious things, mm -hmm. you know, that a believer does. They do things like uh, tithe and usher and uh, sing on the choir, water baptism. There's nothing wrong with water baptism. We know water baptism is good, but water baptism doesn't save you. Mm -hmm. Remember now, that baptism takes place once you accept Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. According to 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Jesus, he baptizes us into the body mm -hmm. of Christ. But the water baptism is uh, something that we do because Jesus did it. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the real baptism has already taken place way before you reach that water. Mm -hmm. But those people who come to watch you uh, get emerged in the water, what you're saying is, I'm taking off the old, putting on the new, mm -hmm. and now I'm become, be, becoming identified with who? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're saying. And Paul uh, goes to the scripture, and he shares with these believers, he says, according to uh, Ephesians, the, two, the second chapter, eight verse, he said, for by grace mm -hmm. are we saved. Through faith. No goodness of ours. We couldn't work for it. We couldn't earn it. No goodness of ours. It was by God's grace that we're saved. And that's the picture that he wants to paint. And it keeps us from trying to, I guess, get on God's good side. You know, sometimes we try to get on God's good side by working here, working there, working here all over the place. Those are good deeds. Don't get me wrong. Those are good deeds. But the only way we're going to get on God's side is by Pleasing him with what? Faith. Mm -hmm. That's what pleases the Lord. And as we look further into the lesson again, uh, you ask yourself the question, why did Paul choose Abraham? Well, Abraham back toward biblical days was highly esteemed by the Jews. They considered Abraham to be a person almost of worship. The Muslims, uh, they love Abraham. The Jews, they loved Abraham. And, and Paul, during Paul's day, he wanted them to understand, yes, Abraham did some good deeds, uh, but he wanted them also to understand, but it wasn't Abraham's works because he was saved. It wasn't because of his works that he was accepted. It wasn't because of anything good that he done, that he done in so many words. He wanted to paint a picture that is only by God's grace that Abraham saved. When he believed God, God justified him and declared him to be righteous. Now, that would get confused about that word righteousness. That doesn't mean that you're perfect. Righteousness means that you just have right standing mm -hmm. with our Heavenly Father. And as we look at this particular uh, lesson of it, there's a, another key word in the uh, third chapter, the fifth chapter, and the eighth chapter talks about uh, counted or imputed. You see the word counted or imputed. These are what financial terms or legal terms uh, that we understand. Uh, the word counted or imputed, it means to take something that belongs to someone and credit to another's account. And it's always a one-sided transaction. It's nothing good that you do. It's something that they always do for you. And Let's use this as an example. What did the God do? God took his righteousness and he credited it to Abraham's account. Not, if, not because Abraham didn't do anything good, but this is what God did because what Abraham what, believed God. Uh, I had a 
example here, which is a good example. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, let's say you owe the bank fifty thousand dollars, and you agree to pay them ten dollars a week. Uh, of course, you know that fifty thousand has interest, but you agreed to pay them what ten dollars a week. So you do that for what a year, two years. And all of a sudden you come here one day to make a payment. But the bank teller tells you that your account has been fully paid mm -hmm. and you have a credit mm -hmm. of one million dollars to your account <laughs> by Bill Gates. <laughs> now on the flip side of that, this is what Jesus does for us. What did he do? He paid for our sin debt mm -hmm. in full. Mm -hmm. And he credited to our heavenly account Amen. for his righteousness. And that's a good example right there for us to be able to use because you try to use a lot of different ways to help people understand it's nothing good that you've done, but it's what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. And when we realize it's all about God, yeah. Then we'll be able to understand what grace is all about. I don't deserve it. All but right. God just what shows favor. Amen. And that's and, and sometimes as the pastor say, favor is not always fair. But that's rest assured God is no respect of a person. Mm -hmm. Now as we look at the lesson a little bit again, uh, I want to look at uh, the first couple of verses. And like I said, I'm gonna kind of paraphrase. It asks the question, was Abraham saved by faith or was he saved by works? That God accepted him. Let's just say if it was by works that Abraham was saved, then Abraham would have something to what brag about. He will have something to boast about, or he'd be able to what stick his chest out. But you and I know the only boasting that we can do is only in the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we boast in the Lord of what the Lord is doing or what He has done, then we are the, we're on the right path. When we start boasting about what I have done or what you have done, then you're trying to take God's glory because we want God to get all the praise and we want him to get all the glory for what he has done. And without God, we wouldn't be what? Nothing. If we live and move and have our being because of the Lord. And as we look at that fourth through the sixth verse again, as it says, when people work, their wages is not a gift. If you work in eight to ten or whatever, that's not a gift. You just earned that. <laughs> and your supervisor come up to you and say, uh, we're not going to give you a check this week, but we'll give you a gift. You're not going for that. <laughs> you said, you give me what I work for. <laughs> but it's not that so with God. When God gives you a gift, mm -hmm. that's nothing you've done. Mm -hmm. That's what scripture says, for by grace, we'll say mm -hmm. what? Through faith. Mm -hmm. So it's all about what God does, and it's all about what God is doing right now in our life. And as the scripture says in the fourth through the eighth verse, King David, he spoke of this blessedness also. And we remember David, uh, he broke the law. Uh, he, he violated the law. He was guilty of what? Adultery. Mm -hmm. He was guilty of what? Murder. Mm -hmm. But God forgave him. Mm -hmm. He said, this is a man after my own heart. So what do we, the only difference between David versus the Old Testament Saul was David was quick to repent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was quick to run to God. And we want to encourage you when you mess up and sometimes sometimes people feel guilty about certain things, don't run from God. You always run to him mm -hmm. because he's already credited your account with his righteousness. That's the way he sees you, as right standing. Mm -hmm. We have right standing with him. He no longer sees you as that lost man, that lost woman. No, no, no. You are a new creature. That's what the scripture tells us. If any man what? Be in Christ. Mm -hmm. He's a what? New creature. Mm -hmm. Old things, old lifestyle, old ways. That stuff is gone. Yeah. And God put a sign out there that says no fishing. So we don't have to worry about bringing up our past. It's already done. Mm -hmm. When Jesus, when we accepted Jesus Christ, I first say that the blood of Jesus washed our past, present, and future sins mm -hmm. as far as to the east to the west, never ever to remember them anymore. And that's the way God sees you in Jesus as whole.
And that's why we have to go, that's why we have to pray in the name of Jesus because God only hears you, his son. But when we come in the name of Jesus, it's just like us standing right there. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, yes, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. And we make our plea to him. So again, David, he speaks about the blessings of God. He said, uh, blessed are those whose, trans whose transgression are forgiven, mm -hmm. whose sins are covered. Blessed is, is the one whose sin that the Lord will never count against him. And that's good news. Mm -hmm. And that's the good news that we share with the lost, careless, unconcerned. You know, we go out and share the word of God with people. You know, they may be doing what sinners do. You know, what we used to do when we was out there lost. Mm -hmm. If it was smoking dope, if it was drinking wine, if it was drinking liquor, that's what they do. We don't tell them, say, hey, we're not looking at that. We just got to with some what? good news. Mm -hmm. We want them to know that you no longer have to live the way you are. And, and, and the good part about that is we see that stuff because we used to do it. But we know it's a day and end. Mm -hmm. So we meet those people right where they are to let them know, hey, God loves you just as you are. Amen. This is what grace does. Mm -hmm. This is what justification does. And sometimes we don't understand how can a holy, good God forgive a person who has killed all these people, mm -hmm. uh, murdered all these people, how can he be a just God to forgive them? Grace. For by grace, are you saved? Mm -hmm. That belongs to the prison man, the prison woman, to the man who feels that nobody cares about him, God still cares. Mm -hmm. And he still loves him, just yeah. like he loves us. So therefore, we have to forgive him. I know sometimes it takes a while for some time when people have hurt you or hurt your loved ones, but you and I both know that unforgiveness can hinder our faith. Mm -hmm. It can hinder our faith from kind of moving forward a little bit there. And the Bible said that Jesus was tempted at all points just like we were, yet he was without sin. So he understands what pain is all about. He knows what the hard burdens are all about. Because nobody knows you like Jesus. Mm -hmm. He understands that pain. He understands that hurt. But there come a time where we have to realize, why should I forgive him? Think about how many times we sin against the Lord. Mm -hmm. Think about my past my present, mm -hmm. my future sins that he took on that cross. Mm -hmm. And you tell me I can't forgive this person. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is a choice that we have to forgive people when they trespass against us. Yeah, it hurts. I'm not saying, yeah, be happy. No, no. We know pain hurts. It hurts. And sometimes it takes God to heal that pain. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the grace of God yeah. when, it, when a person comes to him. And all this has to do with our faith as we continue to grow in the Lord. Because even though Jesus told Peter uh, in the garden before he went to, to the cross, he told him when you when you're st st strong, strengthen your brother. Mm -hmm. And he told him first that, that Satan desires to what? Sift him. Mm -hmm. He desired to have him. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus said, I pray for you. Mm -hmm. That your faith, what? Fail yeah. not. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he said, when you are strengthened, help your brother. When you're converted, help your brother. So again, Jesus understands. And he, we have a responsibility to our brother. Mm -hmm. Even though we may not like what they're doing, but we still have a responsibility to love them mm -hmm. and to forgive them and to put them in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. Now, that circumcision... Uh, in the, in the ninth verse through the twelfth verse is the blessedness only for the Jews. The Jews were considered circumcision. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gentiles were considered uncircumcision. If you weren't a Jew, you automatically was a Gentile back during that time. And it says, what about Abraham? Paul had been saying Abraham was declared righteous by God because of what? His faith. But how did his faith help him? Was he declared righteousness only after he had been circumcised or was it before he was circumcised? Well, the answer was God accepted Abraham first mm -hmm. and then he was circumcised later. But what is circumcision? Back in the Old Testament, God ordained a circumcision for Abraham. All that was is like a separation 
Like if you were, if Abraham circum, circumcised his family, that just put them on, on God's side and so and so we're like set apart versus the ungodly people. But according to this definition, it says circumcision was a sign to others and a personal seal for the Jews mm -hmm. that they were God's special people. Mm -hmm. Just like water baptism. It's a sign. It's a symbol. Water don't save you, but it's a sign that you uh, took off the old and put on, on the new, and you are now being who identified with who? Jesus Christ. So that was what circumcision was all about. Uh, we could go more on that particular uh, circumcision. And uh, also in the Old Testament, there were uncircumcised hearts, mm -hmm. uncircumcised mm -hmm. ears. So what are you talking about? People who did not really hear and love and obey God's word. In the New Testament, circumcision of Christ, it refers to the death of the cross, mm -hmm. meaning we are circumcised, not physically circumcised, but we're spiritually circumcised. And of course, Abraham, back during his time, they had to circumcise those male boys after uh, eight days after they were born. Mm -hmm. That was their uh, history, that was their culture. But we do it for hygiene problems. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, men do it for hygiene problems more or less today. But it only was a sign that Abraham, people were set aside for God's purpose and God's use. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this also, uh, and one key point here, talking about the faith of Abraham. One of the things that can hinder our faith, and let me say this before I say this, never tell a person that you don't have faith. Don't say you don't have faith. They have faith. It may not be word. It should be. But they have faith. The scripture talks about little faith, strong faith, uh, shipwreck faith, mm -hmm. radical faith. But it's not my responsibility to tell a person you don't have faith. Mm -hmm. See, you remember again what I said in Romans 12 3 God's depth to each one of us the measure. Mm -hmm. You start off with the same amount of baby faith, just like a baby firstborn. Mm -hmm. That baby has to be fed, cultivated, nour mm -hmm. nourished. It's the same way spiritually. You have to spend that time. You have to get those babes in Christ because that's what they are. Mm -hmm. Babes in Christ. We have to make sure that they are being nourished with the word. Mm -hmm. And as the scripture said, those of babes in Christ desire what? The sincere milk mm -hmm. of the word of God. That they may what? Grow. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, this is what we do with those babes. We don't tell them you don't have faith. We just help their faith. And remember now, if we're not being a blessing to them, we're being what? A stumbling block or a hindrance. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be a stumbling block and hindrance to anybody. Hindrance, uh, lack of knowledge. You know, the scripture tells us lack of knowledge sometimes can hinder our faith. Uh, not acting on what the word of God say. When you say, I believe what the word of God say. And many people say, yeah, I believe what the word of God say. But they never act on it. They never put it into action. And faith is what? Acting on what the word of God says. If God said it, if he said, forgive this person, mm -hmm. and I just say, well, you know, let's do it. No, he said, forgive them. That means you got to do it. Mm -hmm. The word go is a command. God doesn't give suggestions. He always gives <laughs> commands. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to obey the command. Even though you don't understand it, I don't understand it. Well, it's mm -hmm. not for your understanding. It's for your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. It's for the man that was born again. He received that word, and was this mind is renewed with God's word, it lines up and gets in line with mm -hmm. what the scriptures say. And the body don't have no choice but to follow. That's who that's who man is. I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. If you're looking at this house, this is not really me. This is just a house I live in. Mm -hmm. The real me is inside. That's the man that the Holy Spirit has sealed to the day of redemption. This body has to go back to where it came from. It does. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from. So again, uh, also the lots of life. You remember uh, Abraham's nephew, Lot? Mm -hmm. God couldn't really give him or show him revelation what he really wanted to do because Lot represented the flesh, worldly. Mm -hmm. And Abraham represented spirit. Mm -hmm. 
But God couldn't really give. Lot means obstructive view. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can have people in our life that obstruct, obstruct us from seeing what God wants us to see. Mm -hmm. Because they're always talking negative. Or they're always talking against what the word of God says. So we have to be careful with the lots of life. Because you don't want anybody to hinder or to obstruct you from seeing what God wants you to see. Friends are very important. Friends are very critical. Mm -hmm. So again, we have to make sure that God gives us the right kind of friends to choose from. Now, this lesson, the faith of Abraham, again, like I said, we could go a lot of different ways. We could have talked about the different levels of faith. Could have been on that for a long time. But we're talking about this, the faith of Abraham. Well, what kind of faith did, did he have? As I said before earlier, he had an obedient faith. Mm -hmm. He had a trusting faith. Meaning he took what God's word said and he had a growing faith. He didn't never get tired of uh, growing. And that's the kind of faith that we must have today. Those three kind of faiths. Growing faith. Trusting faith. Obedient faith. Radical faith. You know, I'm not just content with just coming in, you know, coming in, pay my dues, blah, 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 blah. And let me say this too. Uh, you know, for the spiritual heavyweights, and we do have a lot of spiritual heavyweights, the Bible said the just shall what? Live, live by faith. Mm -hmm. Well, when do I need to live by faith? Every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that to say this. Treat your faith like a servant. I exercise my faith right here for my brother. Okay, that's one assignment. Then I'm moving over here to exercise my faith for my sister. Mm -hmm. That's another assignment. What I'm saying is don't give your faith a break. Keep it moving all the time. Mm -hmm. And that'll keep us from worried about, well, what's, what's the, the words that Sister Selma said? Word of, what, what, why are you worried? Why are you afraid? Why are you fearful? Why are you doubting? Well, we keep our faith operating and moving and not worried about stuff in the enemy and trying to bring into our life. You won't be worried about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I like to treat my faith like a servant. And what I mean by that is, I like to say things that Jesus said. He spoke the things as though they were not, mm -hmm. as though they were. And the Bible say, uh, choose life mm -hmm. or death. And the Bible also say death and life in Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life is in the what? Power of the tongue. So what we speaking? I'm speaking life. And when you start speaking life, you're exercising your faith. Mm -hmm. Treat your faith like a servant. Don't give it a rest. Keep it on the move. If you guys have servants today, those servants, their responsibility is to do what? Do what you told them to do. Huh? They can't come in until they finish what? Their assignment. But I'm saying this to say this. Keep your faith moving. Because again, the Bible says faith comes about what? Hearing. And the more we hear that word, mm -hmm. the more stronger our faith will be. Again, we want to thank God for the lesson, the faith of Abraham. Very good lesson, very critical lesson, especially in times like this. Uh, you know, sometimes it's good when you talk to people, and I don't try to size people up when I say size them up. It doesn't take long to see whether or not a person is in faith mm -hmm. as you talk with them. But again, you know, I only can share with them what I've learned. Mm -hmm. That's all I can do, share with them what I've learned. If they receive it, fine, if not, no problem. And you know, sometimes people would get offended mm -hmm. People would get offended when you start talking about the God kind of faith. Mm -hmm. They would get offended. Mm -hmm. Why would you get offended? All it is is something to help you grow. Mm -hmm. But again, we thank God for the lesson. Thank God for each and every one of you. I see our time is expiring, so we want to cut off right here. But praise God for mm -hmm. the listeners. And we're believing and confessing that your faith will grow. Mm -hmm. And we're believing and confessing that breakthroughs will take place mm -hmm. in your life. In Jesus' name. Again, we look forward to seeing you.